tell me a little bit about what it is that you do. As a, for a profession? Yes. I'm a stock market analyst, so I help uh, institutional investors, which are mutual funds, hedge funds, and pension funds, uh, to make better investment decisions. So I talk to them about 18 stocks. I cover 18 different companies. Seven or eight of them are video game companies, and the rest are different type of media. And I'm an expert in how those companies earn money, so I'm pretty good at forecasting what they will make and helping investors figure out if they should buy them or sell them and when they should do that. So um, what is a typical day like for you? I uh, roll out of bed at 3.15. I'm in the office by about 4.20 a.m. Uh, and I, throughout the day, we have a morning meeting at 5 o'clock every day, so I Typically, I'm just catching up on news, and if I have something that I wrote, I'm going to talk about it. I prepare that for the morning call. We all have a morning call, 5 o'clock to about 5.20, and then for the rest of the day, I talk to investors typically till about 1 on the West Coast, and then from 1 to about 4 or 5, I write. So I write a note almost every single day, um, in typically a three- or four-page single-space note a day uh, about one or more of the stocks that I cover. So I have a bunch of industry notes I write. I write, I write four industry notes a month, and then I write when people, when companies report. Um, so it's talking to people and writing about yeah. what, what I'm going to talk to them about. So forgive my uh, lack of knowledge about this industry, but um, these, these notes, are these like published? Are these just for you? Are these... What are these notes? Um, we, we publish. We're regulated by the SEC and by the New York Stock Exchange and by the, the NASDAQ. So, um, I, yes, in fact, they are published, and yes, they are sent out. I have to have a license in order to write these things because they're investment opinions. So I have, I have three or four licenses, but, they're, but they're, I have to have an analyst license. I have to have a brokered license. I, have, I happen to have a principal's license. I have some other ones. But... But, um, yeah, they're reviewed by a person who has even a higher license called the supervisory analyst. So I write notes. I have a supervisor, supervisory analyst read them and approve them. Then they get published. We, we post them on something called First Call, which institutions subscribe to. So they, you know, theoretically, anybody can buy a subscription. You can read them, but you wouldn't want to. But, yeah, so I just talk about why these companies are good investments or not and why their stocks are going to go up or not. So if I'm an, like an, ec an economics major and I want to do this for a living, what would you recommend? How, how do I pursue that? Um, <laughs> working on the sell side, which is what I do, there are 2,000 people who do it. So it's sort of like saying I'm, I'm a PE major and I want to be a professional athlete, and I'd say good luck. Right. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying that it's not necessarily that we're as talented because obviously not as many people want to be sell side analysts as want to be professional athletes. But it's a pretty well compensated profession. Um, so the answer is get as much education as you can. Uh, go to the best school you possibly can because people who hire are snobs. Um, get the best grades you can for sure. And then get an entry level job at a brokerage firm. So get a, you know, you can go to work for Merrill Lynch or Goldman Sachs. And if you can get a, an entry level job in the investment banking department or the research department, you can come up, you can roll, you know, work your way up and become a research analyst. You want to be a games analyst? There's only 35 of us. And that's probably going to shrink because, you know, packaged products are starting to shrink. So the odds of getting that are pretty slim, but become an analyst and maybe. Uh, if you want to be on the mutual fund side, there are tens of thousands of those guys. So many, many, many more jobs, and they're very lucrative. They make, they make a lot of money. So working in the market's good because if you think about the stock market, there's only two ways to invest, I mean, other than real estate. You can buy stocks or you can loan money, you can, you can buy bonds. Bonds have a fixed return, stocks have a variable return. Well, stocks go up on average more than bonds, so the market goes up every year, literally by 9% a year compound for the last 100 years. So everybody makes money. So if you work in the stock market, everybody who works there makes money right. because because investors make money. So it's really a great job. It really is. I mean, if it's something you care about finance, I highly recommend it. It's a great job. It's hard, and a lot of people lose their jobs, but it's a great job. So how did your relationship with game trailers start? Uh, the, uh, you know, actually, because I'm in L.A., uh, I was asked to be on bonus round only because I'm there and I'm quoted a lot, and I was on the very first one. And I got good reviews. I mean, a lot of people thought it was fun and interesting. So I got asked to be back again. 
and and that was four years ago. After a year and a half or so, they started asking me if I wanted to do my own show, and it took another couple of years before we got it figured out. Um, and it was their idea. I don't get paid, so it was an easy decision for them. Right. And and you know, obviously, I'm getting enough reviews that they they they're making money on it, so it works out for everybody. That's pretty cool. So, what are your most anticipated games for 2011? You know, I'm so funny. Uh, I don't play very many games when they come out. Right. I'm just on this crazy lag. So I haven't played Mass Effect 2 yet. You know, I haven't played Red Dead Redemption yet. They're both I, quite good. I have it. I haven't played Batman Arkham Asylum yet. But I have it. I, yeah. pur I purchased yeah. it. Yes, you know, I haven't played Borderlands yet. I mean, so I have this yeah. stack of games that I really want to play because those games I want to play. Yeah. And so I'm probably not playing anything this holiday except Gears. I think that's the only game I'll actually yeah. fire up and play because I really like those guys. So, yeah, it's a good game. I will ultimately play Elder Scrolls Skyrim because I love, love that game. But, but that to me is like a next year sometime. Like I don't need to, next year sometime. I mean, I'll just like I'll pick it up in June or whatever. It's like I don't have this need to finish the game before somebody spoils it and tells me, you know, like whatever rapture explodes or something. And I, like I don't, that doesn't matter to me. Um, so, I, you know, honestly, my most, my highly, most highly anticipated game this year is Red Dead Redemption. I'm gonna play that. Well, that's that's a good choice. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. They well, don't have. Even if they're sincere and would like to tell you, sort of drop any pretense and drop sort of the marketing bullet points or whatever it is. Like they've been trained not to do that. Whereas my whole background is, is being 